Let's talk about Excel 3D formulas. Did you ever need to reference the same cell or the same range on multiple worksheets? So for example, you're summing up the sales for different products and each product has its own tab. One way of writing the formula is to reference each tab separately, but that can get annoying. There is a more convenient way of writing the formula and that's to use a 3D reference you're gonna end up with a super short, flexible formula. For those of you that know how to do this, stay with me because I have a bonus tip for you from Bob. That's Bob Umlas, so you know it's gonna be good. Here in this example, I have sales information for different products put on different tabs. So first one is the game products, then we have utility and then productivity. Now notice that the structure of the tabs is the same. I have months on one side, a title here, data, and a total on the bottom. Now let's say I want to add up the sales information for all of these products for each month. Well, one way to do this is just to start off with the equal sign, go to each tab, click on the cell we want, put in a plus, next tab, cell, plus, next tab, cell, enter. Now, if you have more sheets, you'll have to do this for all the cells. Now, that's fine, but one, it can get really annoying if you have a lot of sheets. It's also not dynamic. So if we end up getting a new sheet with a new product, so let's say product health, we'd have to make sure that we update our formulas. There is a better way of doing this, and that's called using 3D formulas. Because the great thing about 3D formulas is that they're dynamic. The moment you add a new sheet in the middle of your start and end sheets, your values will update automatically. Here's how you write these type of formulas. You start off with the first sheet we want to include. So I'm going to go with product game and let's just click on the cell that we want. This is going to help us give the correct structure for the sheet name. Because notice mine has single quotation marks around the name. And that's because I have a space in the sheet name. If you don't have a space there, you're not going to see the single quotation marks. Now, since we want to add these up, we're going to use the sum function. The starting sheet is this sheet. So for 3D formulas, you just need to mention your cell once at the end. What you need is your starting sheet and your ending sheet. And if you have spaces in your sheet names like I do, you just need one quotation mark and one exclamation mark at the end. We're going to need to add the colon here. So just the same way you would refer to a range, you have that colon from and to. We need that for the sheet names. Now we need the last sheet. Just to make sure I spell it correctly, I'm actually going to click on it and that's included in the formula. But here, one thing I have to watch out for is that I don't need the single quotation mark. I just need to put all of this in one starting single quotation mark and one ending single quotation mark. I also just need one exclamation mark. It's, it's a bit tricky to get the formula right, but once you do that, it's just super easy to maintain. Now remember, if you don't have the single quotation marks, it means that you don't have spaces in your sheet names, which is fine. It actually makes it simpler to write this formula. Now I'm just going to close bracket, press enter, and I have the total value. Now I, all I need to do is to send this down. I could do this for the total as well, but since I have the totals in all the sheets, I can add them up in this way. But just to show you that you don't necessarily need to just reference one cell, you can also reference a range on each sheet. Let's just write the sum from scratch here. What we need is the starting sheet, and I usually like to click on it to make sure I don't make any mistakes in the spelling. I'm going to include the range that I want, and then right here, I'm going to add the ending sheet, remove that extra exclamation mark, remove that extra single quotation mark, and close bracket, and I get the same value back. Now, here's the great thing about using 3D formulas. Anything that you drop in between these is going to get included. Now, that can be a good thing because anytime you have new products, all you have to do is add it in the middle. So let's just try that. 
let's go to the game one. Let's just copy it and put it right here. I'm just going to call it prod health. Now let's go to all products. My values are updated. Just to make sure we see it, let's just increase this by a really big amount. Let's go to all products. We see it pull through here. So I'm just going to press control Z to go back. Now the only downside to this is if you happen to have other sheets that don't belong in here, and for some reason you decide to drop it in the middle, they're going to get included. So in this case, I have other information here. This is the bonuses that I'm paying out for each month. Let's take a look at my all product number here. Total is 203,000. The moment I drag and drop the other info somewhere in the middle and go to all products, my total here changes. This one didn't change. Why? Because it looks like I have no total on this sheet, right? But the sum that I actually calculated from scratch, that one got updated. This is something you have to take care of if you use 3D formulas, that you make sure you don't drop other things that don't belong in there in the middle of your tabs. But let's get to Bob's trick now. He sent me this trick. He said, guess what? You can use 3D formulas on sheets that aren't together. As long as they have a common name, so in this case, all of my sheets start with prod, I can make a 3D formula that adds up all the prod sheets. Here's how you can do this. So let me remove these because they're not correct anymore. I have this other info sitting right there. Let's take a look at Bob's trick. What you need to do is use wildcards in the name of the sheet. We can use the asterisk sign. So in my case, prod is always at the beginning of the sheet. I don't need to start off with the asterisk sign, but if prod was going to be somewhere in the middle of the sheet name and I want to be sure I include all sheets that have the word prod, I can start off with the asterisk sign. But notice I put in the single quotation mark first, and then I type in the name that's common to all the sheets I want included in my result. So in my case is prod, then I put the asterisk sign as well, single quotation mark, and the exclamation mark. And then the cell that I want to add. So I just want it B3 in here, close bracket. Now watch what happens when I press enter. Excel goes and automatically brings the sheet names that have the word prod. But notice what it did here. It put game to health, and then it skipped other info and put utility to productivity. So it completely skipped any sheets that don't have the word prod in there. All I need to do is send this down and I have my sheets included. Now again, I still have to be careful though when I add new sheets because if I add anything in between game and health, it will get included. But using this trick makes it a lot simpler to write such a formula. You can use wildcards in sheet names. Now, thanks to Bob Umlas for sending me this trick. So that's how you can create a 3D reference formula in Excel so you can easily consolidate your data from different tabs. Use it to add up costs from different cost centers or consolidate your budget data. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing if you'd like to improve your Excel skills and I'm going to see you in the next video.